Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. Good morning, it's 6.45 on a very misty and murky Saturday the 18th of December. Just making my way down to the land and as always, not quite sure what we're going to get done today, but let's find out. Well, here we are down on the land. It's uh, way too dark still to uh, be able to do a decent video for you. Very frosty as well as misty this morning. At least we've got lights up the cabin. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, rather than fumble around in the dark with you, let me get opened up and we'll catch up with you shortly once we get settled into the cabin. Well, first things first, <laughs> let's get the fire going because it is a little bit uh, cold this morning. So we'll get that fired up. I think I'm going to have to get some lights on in the cabin because it's too dark for the video. But uh, let me get this sorted out first, get a coffee and then we'll catch up with a chat. Well, daylight is very slowly breaking over the field. <laughs> the fire's going, so it's getting warmed out in the cabin. Still too dark to sort the chickens out yet. <laughs> I can hear them all pacing impatiently, but uh, it is deceptive. As I turn around towards the coop, you can see it is still dark out there. So let's do the cabin chat and then we'll sort the chickens out. Well, good morning. Ah, it's the weekend. <laughs> it's been a, a wild week of weather this week. Um, it's still dark in the cabin. I've had to put uh, a little light on. I don't like putting too many on this time of the year because um, there's not that much daylight to recharge the batteries off the solar. <laughs> Can you hear the chickens? <laughs> I don't know if you'll hear them on the video or not. They're kicking up a fuss. Um, they know I'm here and they're all wondering why I'm not there putting the food out. But it's just too dark. Um, I tried fumbling around in the dark last week and uh, <laughs> it's difficult to see where you're stepping and uh, I end up trailing a load of mess back into the cabin so uh, well, they'll be okay for another 20 minutes or so while we have a little chat. Um, hopefully the, uh, the lighting is sufficient, clearly I don't know because I'm on the other side of the camera <laughs> but hopefully it is. The, uh, the fire is going, warming up the cabin, so that's nice. I got my cup of coffee, so that's even better. So uh, let's get to it. Um, it will be a very short cabin chat today. Um, I can't spend too much down, time down on the land today because I've got uh, personal chores to do uh, in a couple of hours. I need to be uh, on the motorway heading uh, north for a few hours. Uh, to go visit uh, mother and sister um, so sister might be watching hi <laughs> mother won't she's no concept of YouTube <laughs> um, so yeah it's that time of year uh, need to get around visit various family and friends um, so apologies for the uh, the brevity today um, but I will as we go into the Christmas holiday season I will be able to spend a bit more time and put a bit more content out. Maybe even a live chat. I haven't done one of those for, God, it seems like years. It probably is a year. <laughs> I think it's before COVID, so it might even be coming up for two years. Um, if live chat would be of interest to you, now's your chance. Tell me in the comment section. Um, and if so, then next week, uh, because I have got um, Thursday, Friday off work um, next week 
uh, I can probably spend a bit of time and uh, set the camera up at home and we'll do a, a live chat but only if you want me to <laughs> so now's your chance tell me yes or no in the comments section and if it is a yes um, then have a little think about what kind of questions you might want to be asking during the, uh, the live chat um, I've been away this last few weeks started a new job so I've been spending time down in London <clears throat> it is a different world down there in the capital um, <laughs> the temptation to go off on a tangent and talk about the difference in people's attitudes um, in the capital versus in the normal world shall we say um, brown lot go there um, Covid is still with us though I don't know if you've noticed um, they're not calling it Covid now um, everyone's bored with Covid they've seen what Covid can and can't do um, and now we have a new variant uh, Omicron um, they're calling it Omicron they're not calling it Covid anymore because it just adds to that little bit of suspense and tension and fear uh, and people might take it more seriously if they call it something else um, or is that just me with my uh, conspiracy theory hat on <laughs> it is there by the fire I just can't be bothered to reach out and get it <laughs> um, so yeah um, that Omicron variant is with us um, and it's quite funny because I went to London on Monday to have three days there um, and I turned up in the office and looked around and there is within the floor it's like an open plan there are 200 desks with computers on this floor um, and I was the only one there <laughs> Monday I was the only one there Tuesday uh, I was the only one there apart from about two hours when another guy turned up did a little bit of work and then disappeared um, and then Wednesday I was the only one there um, it's like I don't know how to describe it but the media and government are pumping out so much fear over this everyone's going to a frenzy there um, there's nobody at work they're all working from home the um, the trains and the buses definitely less people around and everyone now is busy trying to get their third booster jab it's all over the media it's a blind panic with this thing and it's a complete distraction from everything else that's going on which were I to be wearing my tinfoil hat now uh, I would be telling you that that's what it's designed to do. It's a big distraction technique. Um, from other issues, which there are many. Um, I popped into the shop yesterday just to uh, top up before the weekend because I knew I would be away <clears throat> for much of this weekend and I wouldn't really have time to, uh, to go around the supermarket. And I don't know if you're seeing a similar thing, but I am noticing a lot more gap on the various shelves lots of things seem to be um, in lesser quantity not so much availability of stuff now in the supermarkets um, Christmas stuff lots of that about if you want Christmas stuff um, whether that's the, uh, the little gifts that the supermarkets fill the shelves with this time of year you know your, your deodorants your toiletries your little gift sets um food and drink specific christmas stuff because bear in mind the things that are on the shelves now for christmas in all of the festive wrappings this has been made a year ago for a year they've been busy making this stuff just for this time of year this isn't your regular food production that happens week in week out this is specific Christmas stuff that companies who manufacture it, that's all they do. They spend the entire year building up the stocks, ready to put it all out into the supermarkets at this time of the year. And then when Christmas is finished, they start again for next Christmas. Um, so there's plenty of that around because that's not day-to-day -day consumable items. Um, whereas other things that I'm looking for, or I was looking for yesterday, is your day-to-day -day stuff 
that is made week in, week out. And if there's a, an issue with supply or a slowdown in manufacturing, then you will notice the impact. And I'm certainly noticing the impact of that now. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see now that we've got this <laughs> Omicron, this new variant disrupting things again. It's going to be interesting to see um, how the shelves look in the new year. Um, but that wasn't really what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about a couple of things. First and foremost was this year we've been talking about um, the potential for an economic crisis, financial crash, call it what you will, in the new year. Um, and I kind of stuck my neck out and I've been talking about it all year saying, um, apart from the normal reasons to prep, things like broken supply chain, grid down, which we've seen this year, um, a financial crash is a, another potential thing to prepare for. You stock up your food to, as a hedge against inflation and as a, a way of protecting yourselves should your financial circumstances be adversely impacted. You lose a job or there's a shortage of hours, whatever the, the reason is. Um, and it's coming, for sure it's coming. Uh, I put some posts out on the community tab talking about inflation specifically. Um, governments have accepted now that inflation is real. It's here to stay. It's not a temporary thing or a transitory thing. Um, inflation hit 6.8% in the US this last week, 4.8% rising to literally last week 5.1%. Um, and government here is forecasting 6% now by the end of the year. As a result of that, uh, Bank of England, our central bank, has been toying with the idea of trying to raise interest rates as a means of dealing with inflation. They've been terrified of doing it because if they do it, it's going to impact the financial markets and might just tip them over the edge into a crash, which would then have a housing crash and mm, carnage on the streets. 2008 all over again. Um, but they did finally decided this week that they couldn't put off interest rate rises anymore. Similarly, um, across the water, our American cousins, um, their central bank, the Fed, uh, also came out and said, we're not doing it this month because that would be bad for Christmas. <laughs> uh, but next year, we are definitely going to have at least three interest rate rises. So anybody who has a mortgage, credit card, a bank loan, uh, stand by because rates are going up and they will continue to go up. The cost of borrowing credit will become significantly more expensive as we head into the new year. Um, there are a lot of people out there. Hopefully we're not one of those people um, that have gone with the good times, remortgaged to the hilt, maxed out the credit cards and have a mountain of debt. Um, they're going to be in real trouble come the new year as these interest rate rises hit and their monthly repayments suddenly start to increase and increase significantly. Um, it is going to be a strain for sure on personal finances. So lots of stuff happening in the big wide world. We've still got this media hype about war with Russia, war with China, although over the past week it has reduced slightly. Um, but then the newspapers yesterday just couldn't help themselves and they published a list of demands from Russia <laughs> that Western governments must meet to avoid potential for war. Um, it's not happening now, guys. Really, it's not. I'm not saying it won't in the future because who knows if the uh, financial markets and the, the economies of countries take a massive dump, which I think they might, um, then there's always that potential for an excuse to go out and do something foolish like have a little war somewhere um, because it's good for governments and it's good for the industrial military complex as well. And they do tend to have a lot of influence on government. So whilst I'm pretty confident it's not going to happen now, this month, next month, um, next year, the year after, who knows, we might see something. But we have time 
on our side still to get ourselves ready for whichever of these little disasters might befall us as we go into 2022. Um, but the real message I wanted to put out today was you can, you have within your power the ability to do stuff to try and make your situation that little bit better and to provide a bit of a hedge, a buffer, uh, an insurance, if you will, against these potential crises. It's called prepping. Um, and there are lots of facets or aspects to prepping. It's not just uh, beans and bullets. Although if you were to watch some of the, um, and I mean this in a nice way, American cousins, if you were to watch some of the American channels, it's all about beans and bullets. And um, there is a almost a fetish around um, guns in the US. Um, the more you have, the more prepared you are. Um, to a degree, there is some logic in that because in a real, God help us, true apocalypse style, end of the world as we know it, shit at the fan scenario, um, yeah, you are going to need protection. Absolutely you are. You're going to need some form of security tool <laughs> um, to protect you and your family and the things that you've been storing up. Um, but it's not all about that. Um, a lot of it about is about mindset. A lot of it is about skill set. Your ability to turn your hand to whatever task that might need to be done in a grid down scenario if you can't just flick the light on by pressing a switch because you've got maiden's grid power have you got the skills and the ability to do that by some other means if you can't turn up the thermostat to produce heating in your home from the mains because it's down do you have the ability to create a fire of some description or a heat source of some description um, so there are lots of things that you can do and part of it is mindset and skill set so it is worth from time to time just having a little sit down and think about what you have the capacity to do and if there is a shortage or a gap in your skill set or your preparedness then now is the ideal time whilst things are available to go out there and do something about that similarly with food i keep saying every week when you do your shopping Add a little bit, add a little bit, add a little bit. Um, you don't have to go out there and blow thousands uh, and get it all in one go. Indeed, now you would find it pretty difficult to do that because availability isn't there and price is massively increasing. Um, so the only real sure way of doing it, within most people's capacity anyway, is to do it a little bit at a time. Um, so... Whilst there is all of this chaos around us and an awful lot of fear mongering from media and government, particularly around the uh, Omicron situation, um, don't let that put you off. Don't let that scare you into inactivity. Instead, take stock and know it and believe in yourself that you do have the capacity to change things. It might not be an overnight earth shattering change, but you do have the capacity bit by bit to do something to improve upon your situation. I didn't really want to talk too much about my own personal circumstances, but I have kind of touched on it over this year and particularly over recent months. <clears throat> um, even though I have been prepping for quite a number of years now, there are still things that I would like to improve on and I don't have the time or money uh, to be able to do those instantly just like that. Um, so I have been looking around and thinking carefully about what it is I can do and slowly taking steps. You've seen me develop the off-grid capability here on the land despite the best efforts of a minority of people and local authority shall we say um to distract me from that um so i am fairly comfortable or i do have the skills and the majority of the items tools equipment materials that i would need um were something to happen tomorrow and i did need to get out of the house and survive 
down to you on the field, on the land. Um, there is still room for improvement, quite a lot actually, but at least I have the basics nailed down and I have that mindset skill set pretty much nailed down. In terms of my house, yes I could um, bug in into my house. Um, I'm not in the middle of a big city, though there are still people around me and I would prefer that that wasn't the case. I would prefer something more rural, um, away from the madding crowd. Um, and over recent months I have started to take steps to do that. I've mentioned that I'm looking to sell the house. I am. It's now on the market and this week I've had a number of offers from people to buy it, which would give me the capacity then to move away and find something a little bit more rural, a little bit more um, uh, growing space immediately around the house and perhaps even a little bit more ability to convert that so that that too can be off grid, um, which I can't really do with my current home. Um, I've changed jobs to give myself a little bit more time and hopefully a little bit more money. <laughs> that remains to be seen um, to add to my uh, capacity to prepare to buy things. So. It doesn't have to be huge, it doesn't have to be earth shattering, it doesn't have to be overnight, but everybody has a capacity to do something, no matter how small, to try and improve. And as we head towards the end of the year, the Christmas period, I would urge everyone to turn away from all of this noise and distraction and fear mongering and just reflect a little bit on what they have already within their life and the things that we can all be grateful for and to spend a little time and think well can I do some small things a new year's resolution if you will it's a tradition that we do um, what well, we do here in the west anyway as the new year approaches we do have a little think uh, give thanks for what we have and try and make a promise to ourselves about things that we might want to do in the new year um, to make a change for the better. Um, so really the key thing today that I wanted to say was just that, that little message about um, give it a break with all of the nonsense and the fear that's around at the moment. Uh, instead, have a little in a moment, be thankful for what we have and turn our attention to what we can do to improve things as we head towards 2022. Anyway, hopefully it's light enough now. Hopefully this has been light enough on the video for you. <laughs> I guess I'll find out in the edit. Um, and again, apologies for the short duration today, but I do really need to get on and get stuff done and get away um, to visit family and friends. Um, I'm going to sort the chickens out now and uh, I'll maybe give you a little clip as I usually do of that. But then that will pretty much be it for today, I'm afraid. As always, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, I hope you are staying safe and well. It is the weekend. Get out there and enjoy your time away from work and enjoy the weekend. Um, have a little think about what I've said and give me some comments in the comments section. I always do appreciate seeing them. I've got a little regular hardcore of people who routinely comment on the videos and I try to reply to every single one of them and I really do appreciate them. There's lots of useful stuff that people send to me and send to you, the other viewers of the channel. So come on, join in with them. If you haven't commented, then do. We want to know what it is that you're up to, what it is that you think uh, and any tips, tricks, suggestions that you might have. So pop a comment in the comment section and as always, um, give me a like and if you haven't subscribed, please do that. It does help promote the channel within YouTube. It is a difficult environment for preppers in YouTube. YouTube doesn't naturally um, promote this kind of content. Um, so the only way really that it gets pushed out is by the algorithm, seeing that people are liking and engaging and commenting with the videos. And even though it doesn't know necessarily what it is that they're commenting about, <laughs> just by doing that and by liking, um, it 
automatically promotes the content elsewhere. And there are still a lot of people out there that, in my opinion, humble as it might be, um, could do with hearing this kind of a message and having them uh, get themselves prepared. So thanks again for watching. Thanks again for all your comments. I'm going to get cracked on with the chickens. I'm going to put some more wood on the fire because it's cooling down. <laughs> and I'll catch up with you later in the video. Well, we finally got daylight. <laughs> and the chickens are happily pecking around. Uh, they did go a little bit crazy this morning. <laughs> I think they were upset with me not coming straight away. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into the car, into the coop, see what eggs we've got. I have got some greenery for them as usual because it is the weekend. Uh, so let's uh, take a quick look in the coop first. Uh, it's still a bit dark in here. Let's get a bit of light on the go. That's better. Oh, look at all that mess. <laughs> oh, I've got loads to clean up. <laughs> I did come down very early Thursday morning, uh, but I didn't clean up, I just collected eggs. Uh, so we've got, what, two, three, four, five in there. Nothing, nothing. And just quickly check around the floor, make sure, oh, look at that, there's one there, look. In amongst all that mess. Uh, apologies for that. It is a bit scruffy. <laughs> well, let's get these collected up. Uh, and then I'm going to have to come back in uh, with the bucket and have a good de in here. So we've got six this morning since Thursday. So that's good. Just double check. No, there's nothing else lying around. Food and water is okay. I'll top that water up. Um, yeah, I'll top that feed up as well. I will be back at some point tomorrow. But... Um, Look at the state of that. <laughs> oh well, it is natural and it will clean off. So let me get these dropped off in the cabin. And uh, oh, I was going to do that uh, compost bin. I haven't got time today. I'll do that tomorrow. Um, right now I just need to go and get uh, my bucket and start cleaning up in the coop. Well, there we go. That's nicely tidied out. Looking a damn sight better. <laughs> and we've got our first customer. <laughs> so let me leave her in peace. I just need to uh, uh, clean out that water, pop that back. And uh, at some point I'll pop in with some greenery. Well, there we go, as promised, we've got our greenery. The chickens do enjoy the weekend greenery and as usual, <laughs> the little red one expects a hand feed. I don't know why she does that. She's the only one that really does. <laughs> Cockerel is busy shouting them all to uh, come and find the best bits. <laughs> I've got the other red one as well now, hanging around. No, she's been distracted by the cockerel. <laughs> they are funny birds. They are funny, really. <laughs> oh, oh, she's off to lay an egg, I think. She's disappeared. Right, let me get cracked on. I need to be uh, getting everything tidied up, locked up and get myself on that motorway. Things to do today. Well, that's it for today, I'm afraid. I've got to get myself back home and sorted out and get on that motorway. It is a foggy morning this morning, very damp and mm, miserable looking. And... Uh, you can tell the temperature's dropping because when I breathe, I don't know if you'll see it or not on the camera, <laughs> but when I breathe, I'm breathing steam everywhere. Very, really careful with the chickens. 
the uh, there's a a lot of avian flu around the UK right now. I keep getting text updates because I'm registered, or my birds are registered with the uh, the health authorities, and I keep getting texts as each new outbreak occurs around the UK. So you've got to be really careful about spread and uh, disinfect when you uh, come off uh, the land. Uh, me and my neighbour chat endlessly about this. <laughs> A bit early for him today. Hi Gary, if you're watching. Uh, we're just very nervous about uh, making sure that our birds stay safe. Uh, touch wood, we've not got it in this area. Though there are lots and lots of parts of the country, unfortunately, that have got it. Uh, so, feeling a bit sorry for them because all the birds are going to get killed. And we certainly don't want that around here. But right now, the nearest one to me is probably a good, mm, good hundred miles away. Uh, so, that's nice. <laughs> and long may it stay that way. I've not had a any more notifications of uh, additional outbreaks um, over the last week so maybe that's a good sign maybe it's uh, dying out as all of these emergency measures that they bring in uh, help to stop the spread anyway I need to get myself in the car and get off home so wherever you are wherever you're doing stay safe and well and I'll catch up with you in the next video well, that's it for this video. I hope there was something in there that was of interest to you. If you did like the video, please do click on the like button. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. As always, I welcome any comments, questions or suggestions you might have. What do you think? Difficult times ahead? I'm pretty convinced there are for 2022. Lots of different uh, difficulties that we'll all be facing. So what do you, what do you reckon? Take some time now, have a little think about what you can do to prepare yourself and to put yourself in a better position. Whatever it is you're doing, how about sharing it with everybody else that visits the channel and reads the comments? We always do appreciate it whenever people do comment on the videos. So let us know what you think in the comments section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.